Well, it's a topic we're passionate about here on Daytime Ottawa, and that is mental health. And Manulife has done a recent wellness report, and here to tell us some of the key findings from the wellness report, I'm joined by Dr. Georgia Pamaki, uh, the Director of Mental Health Practices at Manulife. Dr. Pamaki, welcome to the show. Wonderful to have you here. Um, is this something you do on a, on a fairly regular basis, this, this sort of survey? Yes, this is an annual report and is uh, the Manual Life Wellness Report is a comprehensive wellness overview. It really gives us a thorough understanding of where we're at in Canada, whether it's individuals, organizations, uh, when it comes to organizational, physical, psychological and financial wellness. So it really ha covers the whole spectrum. I imagine one of the biggest things that probably have come up is uh, the, the pandemic and the effect that the pandemic has had on Canadians' mental health. What, what some of the findings uh, on that particular topic? Well, the, um, this, the wellness report is based on the responses of uh, 56 Manual Life Group sponsors and over 6,000 employees. So it really okay. gives us a really good understanding. And what we're seeing are, of course, um, uh, somewhat expected, but were some signs of the pandemic on our mental health. Uh, for organizations, it's important to know all of these things and individuals as well. So our productivity is suffering. Uh, we're finding that Canadian workers are losing 41 working days per year to absences and and wow. presenteeism. Yeah, so it's uh, we also feeling isolated. About 51% of, our, uh, of our employees are experiencing feelings of loneliness. Um, we're also feeling very financially vulnerable. Um, we see that 57% worry about our financial situation and very tired. Uh, mental fatigue is shown to be number one reason for not making, uh, being able to make healthy choices in our everyday life. So, um, the way we approach this is, of course, to understand those signs and symptoms, but really we're more action-oriented because this is part of our health uh, by design strategy. And we really want to focus on how to help organizations and employees together become stronger and healthier. Yeah, so what are some of the recommendations on how employers can, can help employees? Yes. Yeah, so, of course, you know, with a the pandemic, there is so much that is not under our control, and that is really uh, a real challenge. But we did find in the wellness report, and in fact, there's a whole bunch of things that organizations can control and change. So, we found that organizations that scored the highest in the healthy workplace culture and wellness initiatives also achieved the best results in key health indicators. So, I'll give you some examples. Okay. Offering mental health resources. Um, for example, uh, virtual psychotherapy. Uh, employee assistance programs, mindfulness sessions, we found that they all translate into employee health and well-being improvements. A lot, a lot. Another example. No, oh, yeah, sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. I was just going to say, I mean, another thing that must be on the minds of, of many employees is, you know, they, they have gone to this position of having a little bit more work-life balance, right, where many employees are working from home. They're now, many are, are, are being asked to return to work. What have you heard from employees? How is that affecting their mental state? Yeah, I th the way I see this is I see that the uh, mental health status could be uh, K-shaped. Uh, so one arm of the K represents employees who are very excited about reopening and returning to the office, but the other represents a group of employees who are actually facing mental health challenges out of the pandemic and a lot of fatigue. So for this group, return to office might feel a little bit more overwhelming mm -hmm. and less exciting. Uh, yeah, so I think organizations would be uh, wise to consider both groups. Uh, when they design the uh, support and support their return to office and um, really put a lot of emphasis on culture and wellness programs in 2022, so this year, and I think way beyond this year as well. Uh, what, what are some things that Manulife is doing to help employees? Yeah, so that's uh, we're doing. We're doing definitely um, a lot in terms of providing the flexibility, which is I think is what a lot of people are looking for right now, uh, with our hybrid um, model of working, where we can be in the office, but also we can work remotely. So um, that's the flexibility we need. But we're also placing a lot of uh, emphasis on workplace health culture and and programs. And how do we do that? Because it just doesn't happen kind of magically. Right. Um, there are a few things, uh, right? So we have. Have a, a thank you day, um, which is a day off for the global team. We have um, uh, five extra personal days uh, in 2021 last year, but also this year as an appreciation. Well, these are uh, uh, sorry, Dr. Pamaki, yeah. I hate to cut you off. Just running out of time. Just wanted to say those are some great examples. No of course, they can visit yeah. Manulife's Life's website. It's a great resource to find out more information. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.